Hey everybody, and welcome to part two of my Y-Wing build. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up here now where we left off. And the first thing I wanna do is to go ahead and work on a canopy. Now, as I indicated in the last video, uh, I want to go ahead and build this in the open configuration. And in order to do that, I have to use these clear pieces. Uh, the other piece that is provided for the canopy looks like this, so you can also build it in the closed configuration if you wish. But um, we want to go ahead and use the clear pieces, and you can see what we have to do is um, position them like that. However, before we get to that stage, we have to paint them. And uh, so in order to do that properly, we're going to have to mask off the windows. Now, I've already started here. And you can see how this window is purple, and that's because I'm using my favorite technique of liquid mask fluid. So um, in order to uh, apply the liquid mask here, uh, you can do a couple things. You can use a brush, and I can tell you, though, liquid masking fluid pretty much messes up any brush that you have. Um, and if you're going to apply it to small areas like this, you're going to have to use a small brush. So I'd hate to waste a brush like that. So what I'm doing actually, and what worked really well for the first piece, was to simply use a toothpick. All right, so I'm just putting some masking fluid on the end here, and it just actually flows right into the area of the window. So they're nice and deep, and so it's a nice little well there for the uh, liquid um, masking fluid to just get into that space there, and you just got to give it time to dry off. So let me just go ahead and show you the technique. Alright, so here we have our three pieces drying. You can see that I've applied liquid mask on the interior also. I didn't bother applying it along the roof here because really all we needed to cover was the interior of the windows. So my plan here is after this dries is to apply a light gray color first and then I'll apply a little bit of liquid mask on the exterior along the edges so we can get this chipped paint appearance and uh, then we'll cover it with the blue gray color. All right, so while our pieces are drying, I thought I would take a second just to show you what I've done with the cockpit. Uh, there's not too many pieces, just three basic pieces. You have the main area here, you've got this uh, top part, and then you have the instrumentation panel. Uh, it comes molded in almost a black color. I decided to paint it a uh, medium gray. And uh, along with that, I dry brush uh, some testers metalizer silver or aluminum and that allows us to highlight some of the uh, details there. And then I dirtied it up a bit with the Tamiya weathering kit, um, painted a few of the instruments here. Uh, I tried to use the decal as a guide. Uh, so a couple of instruments are red and yellow, but I really dirtied it up to make it look pretty beat up there. Also applied some of the Tamiya weathering brown to dull the uh, seat as well. All right, so that's our cockpit there, and uh, these pieces are almost ready to uh, paint, so we're going to give them just a little bit more time to dry. All right, so here we have the three pieces now. They are painted light gray. I'm going to go ahead and apply some liquid mask just along the edges there. Again, as with the other pieces, we're looking for this type of look here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and apply the blue-gray, and I'll show you when they're completed. All right, so here we have now the finished pieces. Uh, you can see overall it looks pretty good. Uh, this particular technique, however, is not 100% foolproof. Um, the one problem I have with it is as you peel off the mask area, it can peel off some of the paint adjacent to it, and that could lead to some jagged edges. Um, so what I typically do is I uh, use a sharp X-Acto knife to trace along the mask area before I lift it off, and it tends to limit that. But uh, nonetheless, it, it still happens, and it definitely happened here. Uh, luckily, uh, for the most part, it turned out well, but I still had to take a fine bristled brush to, uh, to repair those areas there. It uh, beats using masking tape, though. I think this works much better for me anyway. Um, and the problem with masking tape is you can have leakage, and you know I've just had problems with that throughout the year. So uh, for me, this worked really well. If there's another technique you're aware of, let me know, because I've been through a number of different model shows where I see these windows that are just so immaculate. I really should stop and ask the modelers how they do that. Uh, maybe they do it this way. Maybe there's another way. Uh, but let me know.
All right, I want to make one quick point here before I move on. As you know, I'm going to be working with more of these rods. And this is what they look like on the tree. Again, they are fairly delicate, so what I'm doing to remove them is just using a very sharp X-Acto knife to cut away at the attachment points and being as careful as I can. Now, a few times the pieces have cracked on me, and I've heard from several modelers they've had the same issues. So, if that happens, don't panic. What I've found, though, is that, as I've mentioned, the model is really well engineered. So I was able to insert each end respectively and align them and hold them into place using this extra thin cement, I was able to bond the piece back together. So just to show you a quick example, this rod in particular is one that cracked and I was able to repair. And you can also further conceal the crack by painting it and weathering it. The other thing too is that this model is a smaller scale, so these imperfections are not as obvious. Okay, so you can tell, getting close to completion here, I wanted to make one note. I know that video sequence I just showed you made it seem easy with installing these rods, but I can tell you they were a bit of a challenge. Uh, there are a few of them have a bend in them, so you have to kind of maneuver around, try to get them into the proper place. And I found it not that easy to do. I was also afraid I was going to just crack something, in particular break these things here. So one thing you might want to consider doing is installing the rest of these rods, maybe putting these into place here, installing your rods, and then putting these on. I think you might find it a little easier to get around the model. All right, so let me just mention what I plan for the rest of this video. If you'll just bear with me, I do, of course, plan on showing you the completed model, but I'm going to reserve that for the end of this video series of this build. Uh, as I mentioned, we have some pastels to apply and decals. Uh, rather than taping that, I would rather move on to something different and that is the painting of the pilot figure. It's my goal to get better at painting figures, so there's a few things I want to try, so I'd rather show you that. And um, then we will end part two and move on to part three, which will concentrate on building the display base. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the pilot. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the figure here, and this is the pilot that comes with the model kit. You can see there's a lot of detailing to him as well. And uh, as you can imagine, there are a whole host of techniques that you can use to paint figures. And to be honest with you, I never really gave much thought to painting figures. I was just happy just to get the right colors on them and move on. But as it was pointed out to me recently at a model show, the figures, uh, when a model is being judged, should be just as good as your model. So it's my goal to get better at this, and I think this would be a good opportunity to try some new techniques. At least new to me, anyway. So there's a friend of mine named Mark Fraley who's really good at painting figures, so I'm going to go ahead and follow his lead here. And let's go ahead and get started. So I am going to follow a particular order here with the application of the paint. We're going to start with the lighter colors and then move on with the darker ones. And once we apply the base coating, those are the essential colors we're using for the different parts of the figure here, uh, we're going to work on applying some shadows and some highlights. Alright, so here we're going to have the figure, and what I could do further is to add highlights. And these would essentially be lighter areas on his suit that you would make by taking the orange color, lightening it up, and applying it to different areas where you think light would be bouncing off. So maybe at the tip of his pockets, uh, shoulders, maybe some of the uh, folds on his suit. Now I did try this, but it didn't look very good to me, and I decided just to paint them over. There's still a few highlights left on them, so I think I'm going to leave them as is. I just uh, painted them over and applied more wash, and I'm going to just leave them like it is now. Now, one thing this has proven to me is that it is definitely worth the time taking to uh, detail your figures. You know, I spent a lot of time detailing the ship, never really thought about the figures a whole lot, but really, once you do that, it brings a lot of character to your figures and really makes them blend in well with your ship. 
Now I'm going to apply these techniques to the ground crew. I again have a 172 scale ground crew that I'll be adding to the display. So as usual, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, contact me at innersuddlermodeler at gmail.com or leave a comment here on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'll pick up then in part three. We'll continue on with the display base and I'll show you the completed project. <laughs>